Next up, as Michael mentioned, we've got the world expert on actually using this stuff, <laughs> Joe Apprendi from Collective, and here to talk to him about it, Andrew Kraft, our SVP of everything. Yes? There you go. Exactly. Wait, wait, wait. First, I want to hug it out. Oh. There you go. All right, this is awkward. I love this guy. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, up until six weeks ago, Joe was my boss. Um, so uh, I'm still your boss. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Very nice. I'm gonna I let, strategically implanted him into the app next. Yeah, I'm going to let you and Brian fight that out. Um, so uh, after that uh, great presentation by by Michael and uh, and Andy. Uh, we wanted to actually sit down with someone who's actually doing this, integrating the programmatic and the direct um, in a way that, that doesn't just uh, maximize, it actually maximizes revenue, not just manages remnant. So I'm here with uh, Joe Prendy, the CEO of Collective. And uh, I'll give you a little known fact about Joe. Not only has he, he has no idea what I'm going to say. Not only has he grown this company from the start uh, at Collective, and and, uh, and grown it into the, the powerhouse it is today, he also does the best Steven Tyler impression I have ever seen. You're not gonna see it today. No, but there, no. there is a video. There is, but what happens- I don't know if it's made its way to YouTube. What happens at a sales will after summit this, this stays at a sales summit, right? So, Joe, in, in uh, November 2010, you launched the Collective Exchange, right? I guess it was November yeah. 2010. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was there. Yep. Um, <laughs> so uh, what was the moment that made you decide to take your direct sales channel and add a programmatic channel to it? Well, I'll give you a little context before I answer that question. So I, I've said this before, I think maybe even last year at the App Nexus Summit. I mean, Collective started first and foremost. With, you're hearing a lot about brand-driven ad demand. We are laser-focused on that automating brand advertising demand or this automated premium market. And when we launched Collective, that was the objective. And at the time, in late 2005, going into 2006, was our, real, you know, our first operating year, we actually, you know, ad exchanges existed. Ad exchanges were largely equated with remnant and low quality ad impressions and brands, you know, absolutely stayed away from it. And we actually, you know, positioned ourselves as the anti-ad exchange, funny enough. Today, clearly, I've dropped that as part of my <laughs> overall communication strategy for a collective. And, but anyway, it was, I don't think it was a, an actual uh, moment. Um, it was a cumulative effect. Um, when you take a look at your business through 2010, saw the advent of Trading Desk, the popularization of RTB, and actually seeing firsthand how demand was shifting. And at that point, and I still think today, large amounts of that demand is direct marketing. It was still a component of our business. About 40% of our ad demand still was based on direct marketing metrics. So when you see demand shift, you've got to follow demand. Um, and quickly, and it was really amazing, when I finally made the decision, we need to launch Collective Exchange, um, it happened literally, you know, picked up the phone, called Brian, we're gonna do this. And we were probably up and running within, from, within two weeks when I actually made the decision strategically, we want to enter this market, and we're going to figure it out. Great. So what were the missteps? What, what did you do wrong first? Well, I guess we just dove right in. <laughs> and that was the right thing to do. It was probably the wrong thing to do. Right. But I think Michael brought it up, and you know, he mentioned a few things, you know, why publishers you know, um, need to embrace RTB transactions. He kind of said maximize yield, reduce operating costs, increase CPM. Those are all good reasons, but for Collective, the primary reason was visibility and transparency into the market. We needed to understand firsthand kind of what uh, these buyers were buying, whether it was early days of trading desks or just other RTB arbiters. We wanted to understand what they were buying, why they were buying it, and what they were willing to pay based on the data sets that they had access to or the data sets that we brought to the table. So the insights and the analytics across all your ad impression volume, if I was sitting, you know, as a publisher, not a owned and operated publisher, but an aggregator of inventory, um, that's a primary reason I would embrace this instantaneously and understand how demand has changed and understand what they're bidding on and what they're willing to pay. Got it. So quick poll of the audience. Um, raise your hand, how many people here buy ads, or their companies buy ads? 
All right, so it's about half, which is good. I can guess what the other half is. I thought is. they only sold 10 people out there. No, no, there's more, the lights are blinding you in, in your old age. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> hold on, let me get my glasses on. <laughs> so one of the things that you did, which, which is really interesting, is you didn't just make it about you had direct and, and then programmatic just happened. You made it not about programmatic or direct, but programmatic and direct. And you had a yep. sales force that handled each. Tell us about that process of, of going after these buyers so, in that way. So when we launched Collective Exchange, I mean, the initial thing was all that we've aggregated, make it available through the RTB market. We didn't really put a lot more thought into that. Look, they want to buy Collective. They want to buy audiences with data. Let's give them access to the ecosystem that we've acquired and curated on the supply side. So that was kind of the, the first instance of that. From there, we said, OK, how do we overlay, overlay data because it's all about data sciences. And if you know, you're a publisher out there and you want to bring inventory to market knowing firsthand that it's being bidded on based on data that you're not really in control of, how you're going to overlay certain value-added services on top of that. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. But to answer your question specifically about direct versus programmatic, I'm actually, in, you, asked, you asked me for a tweet. Um, it's, I've come along so far in the RTB world, it's become such an important component of our business, both as a buyer as well as a seller. I'm actually referring to, okay, we got RTB-based transaction volume, and then there's this non-RTB versus kind of direct versus guaranteed or traditional versus programmatic or exchange sold. But the way we actually thought about selling it was it's an entirely different ecosystem of ad demand. So a lot of the sales channel conflicts that publishers had in the market were really, again, more kind of perception versus the reality of how the market was maturing and how ad demand was changing. In fact, most of the decision making on RTB-based buying really wasn't talking directly to what was happening on the direct sold side. So really, we didn't need to necessarily create an entire separate sales force instantaneously. It was like make, building awareness. It was accessible. Who were those buyers? Today, we actually have a team of people focused on those decision makers, to Michael's point, building relationships with the trading desk, other programmatic buyers, and actually educating them about it's more than just aggregating inventory. There's a lot more ingredients to bringing inventory to market through RTB and non-RTB environments. So um, we just felt instantaneously, and this is the truth even today, that while there's a lot of opportunity to bring the two together, the very sophisticated packaging for premium publishers and all publishers alike, they're really very independent buying ecosystems right now that take advantage of all demand. Again, get the information first. And then you can start making decisions on how you're going to bring it together for packages. So it's interesting you talk about the fears. You know, one, one of the things that, that you guys do is you work with other companies on the sell side and, and offer them technologies, including the ability to create a, a private exchange through, through AppNexus. So What's a private exchange? Right, whatever you call it, right? It's, it's I don't even most, know what it is it's now. The most overused what is buzzword, it? right? That, that's out there. But but what challenges are you finding that that traditional sellers of media are having in uh, in coming on board in this way of thinking? Well, the benefit that Collective has, and again, everybody's probably not so familiar with our business. A lot of people think of Collective as a pure play, audience-driven ad network. Um, but we've invested heavily with in sell side technology and. To Andrew's point, AMP actually enables about 60 premium publishers to manage audiences, audience analytics, audience targeting with a core DMP capability for revenue analytics, audience analytics, and overall holistic ad monetization, display and video monetization. So Collective was always the first client of AMP, technically. So we were kind of the power user or the alpha user, so we could kind of figure this out on behalf of many, with many of the same objectives that a premium brand publisher had, which is selling to brand advertisers versus performance marketers. So when we initially launched Collective Exchange, we obviously thought, wow, you know, we already got this constituency using AMP. They're going to want to add RTB to uh, their overall ad demand uh, capabilities or sales capabilities or sales channel capabilities. So we partnered with AppNexus, basically brought um, their direct sold inventory, which was monetized and managed through AMP through Google. Uh, DFP, their RTB access now managed throughout Nexus, so they kind of have a unified view of all ad demand from non-RTB and RT-based transactions. And the beauty of that was, again, they didn't pigeonhole, to Michael's point again, just this stuff that we didn't sell yet to see what value we could create there from RTB-based buyers. They said, okay, let's see, open up everything to the RTB landscape. We don't have to accept all the bids. 
We can set different rules, however we want to actually introduce this to our overall sales strategy, but we did get the insights, and we can start making decisions. Is this the best yield management decision to sell this section, sell this sponsorship, 100% share of voice, 100% guaranteed at this effective CPM versus maybe offering it up on an impression by impression basis with a combination of RTB and non-RTB. And that goes right to Michael's slide, right? It's about maximizing revenue on every impression. Maximizing revenue, but I think, again, the subjective or expedient decision making that, that publishers have are very, you know, they don't, are doing it without a lot of information. So this, I think today, an app enables this for publishers, help them give a lot more information to make more intelligent decisions around what they should be selling and how they should be bringing it to market. So I, I remember back in November when I was working for you, that uh, when, we, when we first created that, that exchange, it was, um, we felt that, that not all the buyers were on it yet. Certainly, um, it, it was more difficult to get that, those impressions bought, and it's ramped over time. Are you seeing, um, over time, this network effect as more and more sellers are putting their inventory in and more and more buyers are coming on board? Well, I'll answer that, but I, I think I'm just, let's just look, thinking back when I actually announced this, and you know, you've got, Collect us about 300 employees today. Um, we were the anti-exchange. We're about premium <laughs> adverti advertising inventory, you know, direct to publisher relationships, and then it announced launch of collective exchange. The fear in all of our sales executives, you know, oh my God, you're going to let everybody else bid on the collective inventory? What am I going to do? Talk about managing through change and getting these people to embrace the fact that ad demand has changed people. There's a lot of opportunity to do business across both of these channels and trying to manage through that. Um, it was kind of like I, I was just mentioning to Andrew, I don't know if anybody read this book, The Iceberg is Melting. <laughs> anybody hear this? So it's about a, uh, a colony of penguins in the Antarctica. And uh, it was like Yahoo and required basically meetings. their iceberg yeah. is melting and yeah. you need to move people this is going away, we need to go over here if we're gonna kind of continue to operate as a business moving forward. And, and there's a character in this book uh, called Fred. Oh God. <laughs> Fred was the penguin that was always, you know, you know, you know announcing yeah. to the chief of the, of the penguin colony, this is happening, this is happening, this is real. We gotta do something about this. He was the Fred character wow. at Collective. As we, you. you look for these different characters within your organization. I think you were crossed uh, between Lewis and Buddy. I don't know. Yeah. That was the chief or whatever. That's that Lewis. was the grand yeah, Lewis. Yeah. So. And Buddy's just the guy everybody loves. I was, but I was with you, baby. Yeah. I wasn't in denial. There we go. I accepted it very quickly. Went right to acceptance, <laughs> Michael, in terms of understanding the impact of RTB. But, but we quickly realized, and I think this is through education, um, how we needed to evolve as a company. Um, back then, our core value proposition, how we marketed, was about content first. Right. Content as a proxy to reach an audience, high quality ad environment. So we never left that, but we needed to add a whole other set of value propositions to the market. We're not, we didn't have the benefit of have, having owned and operated inventory. If all owned and oper operated inventory, all of a sudden it was going to be made available through RTB, what was the role of Collective as a technology and media solutions provider to the buy side? And I would say to you that this, that, and especially if all the buyers are buying on their own data, and today mostly retargeting data, let alone how they're adding third-party data to their uh, DMP and, uh, and holistic audience buying strategies, most of it's retargeting, and they don't need us for retargeting data anymore. So we quickly realized that where you're running is one ingredient. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other ingredients that you can bring to table. How you actually analyze that inventory, there's a huge push in the, in the uh, IAB today about viewable impressions. Even something as simple as that, bringing viewable inventory availability, which we've always tracked to market versus perhaps non-viewable inventory to market. Rich media formats. What we're talking about today with video, enabling video ad formats as part of overall brand RTB access, all key components, let alone really measuring the success and a return on investment with display. I don't think click rate, post-click attribution, or last impression attribution is the holy grail. I mean, there's a whole new way to measure whether or not display advertising or video advertising is working, whether it's bought non-RTB or RTB based. Right, so before we wrap up, for those, of you, for those of you who know me, I want to make it clear this is the longest I've ever gone without talking about curling, <laughs> right? In fact, uh, Ari at AppNexus has decided there's a drinking game uh, at AppNexus, anytime I mention curling or Michael mentions Canada, 
um, everybody has to drink. So there, you all get your drink now. So as we're wrapping up, um, I ask you to just think of something that's tweetable, some, some pithy statement that, that you can let people tweet before Ari, because Ari is trying to tweet before everybody else, um, about, you know, about where programmatic buying is, uh, is going for sellers. Before I do that, I wanted to give a little bit more reality statistics. There's a share with you how collectives evolve statistically. All right. Well, I mean, if you look this time only last four year, seconds. what percentage of our, our inventory <laughs> was sold through RTB? It's probably less than 5% a year ago. Now it's north of 10% overall. If you look at collective as a buyer, using our data scientists and our data sciences actually select audiences no matter where we're buying them, and most of it through, through AppNexus on the buy side, that represents 40% of our volume today versus under 20% in the same time. So it's absolutely reality. And effect. we're doing that yeah. on behalf of brand advertisers largely, not strictly direct marketers. That's the beauty of this, this ecosystem moving forward. So as far as this tweet, I will say RTB versus non-RTB. Let's go with that to describe how the ecosystem is is changing RTB first and non RTB, even though I think it's gonna be a healthy 50 50 combination moving forward. It's not just about RTB or non RTB, it's about automation, period. We're trying to automate ad demand on the buy and the sell side and make that as seamless and frictionless as possible. And beyond that, I said one last thing and if you are an, uh, an ad network or not a pure play owned and operated ad network, there's a lot of value that you can create through RTV-based transactions beyond the fact that you've just accessing that ad inventory on that site. There's a lot of value that you can create through data sciences, creative. You talked about dynamic creative optimization. That's the next leg of optimization to increase the value of all audience data and all inventory be actually customized to creative based on data. So a lot of opportunity in the non-RTV and RTV world. And I'll just counter with one thing. It's not so much non-RTV versus RTB. It's non-RTB. It's the end. It's the end. RTB. I'm with you, Fred. Great. Thank you, Lewis. <laughs>